Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brew Built X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brew Built Conicals. You can trust Brew Built with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brew Built at morebeer.com. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another shutdown special edition of the session. I'm your host, Justin Crosley, and today I'm bringing you a Zoom video recording that we did with my friends at the Rare Barrel. Alex Walash and Jay Goodwin, co-founders of the Rare Barrel over there, uh, sat down with me to talk about what they've been doing to make it through, how they change their business to make sure that they can succeed through the crisis, just like we've been doing with all of our other interviews. And I had a good time speaking with them. Um, and in fact, because they're, they're, they're close friends of mine, I just really enjoy getting to share ideas with them. I felt that I could relate to what they were going through. And uh, for me, it was it was pretty cathartic, which is what I'm trying to do with these uh, sessions, uh, not just for me, but, but for everybody. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, let me introduce to you, uh, it'll be me <laughs> in just a second, interviewing Jay and Alex from The Rare Barrel. Thanks for tuning in and take care of yourselves out there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live session here on uh, Facebook and and via zoom which is why it's always a little wonky when i do it at first and you have to watch us staring at each other um i'm all i'm new to this i'm a radio guy i'm kind of new to this video thing uh so still figuring that out but uh, i'm excited to be back i've been enjoying doing these um with our with our wonderful guests that i've been able to get on the show and today is no exception i've got uh Jay goodwin and alex Walash from the rare barrel on with us today welcome guys Thanks for having hey. us, Justin. At least we, now we've got Hello. we've got Alex at the brewery. It looks like Bevo's with us today, managing our chat as no, always. This is, this is my living room. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Times really are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has moved into the brewery. This is now his living room. <laughs> Barrels are really comfortable. To sleep on. Yeah, good for the back. You know, for yeah. the posture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jay, where are you at? Are you uh, are you home or an office? Uh, I'm at home. Yeah. I didn't, I still don't know how to do zoom background. So, uh, it's pretty boring behind me. Also, I found in the zoom settings, Justin automatically adjusts my mic volume. So I don't know how I sound now versus before. It sounds fine now. Yeah. It's doing okay. it itself, I guess, which is good. Yeah. I will, <laughs> I will be normal now. <laughs> I've also, I've, I have, uh, developed this, uh, idea during the pandemic that, we're all allowed to like fuck things up. So I'm not even a stickler about audio anymore or my edits or the interview. I just kind of like, I feel like everybody gives everyone else a pass right now. So for sure. Yeah, no, I listened to the last two sessions and I can hear it. For sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaking of interesting backgrounds, uh, you know, Bevo is broadcasting live from her bedroom, which is uh, awesome <laughs> for our listeners. It was it was here or the kitchen and the kitchen is occupied by <laughs> Sam and my child, so I figured it was silent here. Yeah, it's fair enough. Oh, I, I can't like you bed, have, though. It looks like you have wonderful taste in shoes, Bevo. <laughs> I do. And That's are my highly collection. highly organized. <laughs> I can hear, I can read the emails already from our listeners. Like, I always wanted to get into Bevo's bedroom. And, oh, God. And... <laughs> You're giving them ideas. Stop it. Yeah. I'm old and gross. They don't do that anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> uh, well, uh, with that, I want to thank our sponsor, More Beer, who brings every uh, show that we do to you. And they've been our sponsor for years. And while you're at home, uh, stuck there like the rest of us, and you feel like doing some home brewing, it's a great time to get back into that hobby. You can go to morebeer.com and check it out. And I just want to thank them for making all of this possible. I'm pretty sure 
that if if COVID didn't make me go bankrupt, um, uh, not having more beer would have years ago. So thanks to them for always being a supporter of the Brewing Network. Uh, so um, I want to start a little bit different here with the two of you. And I want to, um, I thought we could create a drinking game for our viewers. And we can do it ourselves, and, and it can happen during this, but I'm more like putting it out into the world. And I'm probably not even the first one to do it, but I just thought of it today anyway, and I just want to put it out into the world. And that is, and it can happen during today's show, too. Anybody, I have I have three words. Uh, one of them's a phrase, but three words. Anybody, uh, anytime anyone says one of these three things, we have to drink, and the viewers have to drink. And I think you guys will understand. The words are uh, pivot. Um, unprecedented and these crazy times is the is the phrase <laughs> I think you're I think you're missing the one that I hear on the commercials all the time which oh. is kind of a combo of two and three these uncertain times Uncer- okay let's add that um, we'll add that to the last phrase writing it down um, we, we could just always make it easier and just anytime anyone says these <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, yeah uh, alex is thirsty that start with tea? <laughs> i like drinking games with alex <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so uh i'll bevo and i will try to help monitor uh, i think we'll know when these words come up they're very they're very common right now in our world so um okay other than that i do want to with with the two of you um start from the beginning, uh, w- when this all kind of started and, and what you guys had to do as a brewery. And then we'll just kind of walk through um, changes and ideas you've had. And, and I think if you've if you've seen any of the others, you know that my goal is not really to dwell on, on how bad things can be, although that's OK, too. We can talk about that stuff, but it's to share ideas. You know, my hope is just that other breweries and, and, and companies of all kind can just listen to each other and, and maybe hear something they didn't think of. So. Um, but it's just a great place to start at the beginning. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and assume that right around March 17th, um, you, you guys had to close to the public here in California also. Yeah, actually it was about 10 days before that. Before. Um, yeah. So I was just, I guess a little perspective for me personally, I was, you know, Alex has been doing most of the traveling in the last year. And I finally had some trips coming up. So I went out to London and Copenhagen uh, at the end of January, early February, and then out to Tampa for Tampa Beer Week um, in the Fooder for Thought Festival. And it it was really ramping up. This is like March 6th, 7th, around there. And Hunapu had been canceled as I was flying out there, which is that same weekend. Um Fooder for Thought was a little bit of a smaller festival, so we thought, okay, maybe it'll still go on. But mm. it was just such a weird vibe that people were like, is this happening? Is this not happening? Should it happen? Should it not happen? Yeah, um, yeah. And it was canceled like the day before. So I just flew back from Tampa. And then that Sunday, uh, I got a call saying that um sounded like we were going to have to close pretty much immediately. Um, so we, I, I went into the brewery. Now we live a few blocks away over here. Um, was that call from the city or the health department? If I remember right, that was a governor Newsom thing. Okay. But yeah, it was, it was something like we, we were going to have to close the next day or something. We, but, and there was like three or four hours left of, left of service. So we were just like, Hey, you know, sorry, everyone, finish your beers, but you know, we're not going to serve, we're going to start closing up shop. Yeah. Um, and there's a, I just remember how much uncertainty there was that day. And then the next day, um, our production staff came in because it was, mo- it was like, if I'm remembering right, it was service that was shutting down. So we were still doing production that day. And then it came down, I think from the local, um, health departments that we were going to have to shut everything down. Mm. Um, And so that was our last day of people being at the brewery for a while. Um, And, you know, it, (laughs) there's like four or five other big events between those two days and today that we can get into. But uh, 
those are the big ones, but sure. I don't know, I don't, how was it for you, Alex? Yeah, it was, it was pretty shocking. Um, I, I think just to clarify the dates. So I think it was the, like the Sunday, the 15th that you got back from Tampa and we, we shut down the tasting room. Um, but so it's like a few days before, before that mandatory S- SIP went out. And mm-hmm. that was just, it was weird. I mean, it's, I've, I never thought we'd be in this situation where we would be closing our tasting room immediately in the middle of service and also, and, and, and not, for it not being a reason, uh, because our toilets were overflowing. <laughs> of course. We had yeah. To get everyone out of there. Yeah. Um, and then there's so much uncertainty for about, yeah, two days until shelter in place just happened. really kind of locked it in. Yeah. And so we, we had about a week where we thought that according to the governor, that all breweries in California were deemed non-essential businesses. And so we had essentially shut down, uh, production sales. Like it was locked up, closed. And that's, that's eerie. Yeah. Um, amongst the whole vibe outside that was eerie too. Sure. Um, and then later in that week, I think it was that Friday, the governor in California announced that breweries are considered essential businesses. Um, so, so yeah, then, uh, I mean, a lot mm-hmm. happened in between there though. Well, well, and so I want to dive into that obviously. Um, but hearing you guys talk, hearing you guys mention sort of the, the surprise and the, and the uncertainty and, and how it came down. It makes I kind of want to admit now something that I haven't admitted uh, because my grappling with this started way earlier because of my own beer festival. And so I left for the month of March to New Zealand um, and and the, our beer festival was supposed to happen when I got back. Um, so before I'm making all of these preparations and of course COVID is in the news and I get an email from um, the city, a division of the city of Concord, asking me my official response to whether or not the festival will go on. And I was, I was kind of shocked even by the question because I hadn't even thought that it that it might not. You know, at this point, at this point, COVID is over there. And here's where I'm going to admit. Um, I was a little furious and frustrated, and I was a naysayer. I, I really was like, I mean, I'm not even going to say all the things I said. I was cursing and yelling and like, what is wrong with these people and what are they thinking? And of course, my festival is going to keep going. Are, we're all just going to we're all just going to go hide in a cave. I mean, I was really kind of adamant that this thing wasn't real. Um, and this 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 was like in February, you know. Um, and so I left saying, here's my official statement, which I calmed down and wrote like a polite, you know, one. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, you know, within a week, everything just starts to really change. And, and so does my attitude, by the way. So does my knowledge of what's happening. And, um, I feel a little bad that I, I was so, uh, just adamant that this whole thing was, was, was bullshit, but I just, it never crossed my mind that it could be, you know? Um, and eventually the city, it's amazing. They somehow, they put a lot of trust in me and right up until the time that, um, Newsom canceled all public events, they were still leaving it up to me about whether or not I was canceling my beer fest. And I fairly quickly flipped over to the other side, even before Newsom yeah. knowing, I don't think this is going to go on. I mean, there, this stuff is getting really strange and. Anyhow, I just wanted to kind of admit that I was that surprised, so surprised that, that, that two weeks earlier, I was adamant that the whole thing was bullshit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And that's all I changed. I don't, think, I don't think that's an out, outlier opinion, though. I mean, sort of the nature of a pandemic and also the nature of an unprecedented pande- pandemic that... That's a drink, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank me. Mm-hmm. Um, that it starts so low for so long and then really ramps up quickly. And, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, you know, a lot of the health experts were talking about it on the earlier side, but I think it's totally normal for the general public who haven't gone through this in earnest um, to, you know, just be like, Oh, okay. Like we hear about these kinds of things that once every four or five years, but you know, un- un- until it's real and in your face, it's kind of hard to fathom. So yeah. Yeah. I, you're, 
you're um you have a lot of company there i think okay yeah. well, it, it, does. it is it is hard to fathom i mean i uh i had an interesting experience where i i went on a 10-day silent meditation retreat um at the end of february and they you turn in your cell phone when you go there voluntarily oh right um, and uh and i got out of it and like the first thing my roommate said to me who I, di- I didn't know him and we didn't talk the whole time we get our phones back he's like oh looks like covid's come to the states and i was just like oh <laughs> i don't really know what that means but it means that right. you just wasted 10 days and everything got undone immediately <laughs> that's what i'm thinking it yeah, means and then i came back and i was like i was like did i did i like break something in my brain on this <laughs> retreat like this is this is not normal. This is so far different from uh, what happened when I went into this. Yeah. Totally unprecedented, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these crazy times. Alex, at first, when you said your roommate, I, I didn't think you were talking about the your roommate on the retreat. I thought you were referring to your wife. <laughs> like, that was an interesting way to... No, and my, my so wife's an, I, I was like, that was weird verbiage. <laughs> well, yeah, to compound things even further, my wife's an emergency department nurse in Oakland, wow. and she was quarantined while I was gone in our house. Wow. Um, and you didn't know? Like, you two weren't communicating? No, didn't, didn't know. We weren't, we weren't able to communicate. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to start a GoFundMe for another retreat for Alex. He's going to need it after this. I mean, everything <laughs> got, you know, no. got unraveled. This, this one's uh, donation-based only, so... You, <laughs> You don't need to start a GoFundMe. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is, so that's a really unique experience um, to just, yeah, enter the world. Uh, I Because I was in New Zealand, I was kind of reading a lot of stories like that. It's a big backpacking country. And people, yeah, w- when they locked down the country, there were still backpackers out in the middle of nowhere doing like some serious hikes, you know, these week-long, two-week-long hikes. And they, w- they kind of showed up back into civilization and nobody was there. Like how apocalyptic that must feel. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That is crazy. Because everyone was sheltering in place. And in New yeah. Zealand, they took it seriously. They, they Like that meant you stay in your house. So they would just walk yeah. into a town and it's just, it's you know. Just sheep. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you end up shut down for a period of time until uh, the governor says breweries are um, are open again. And I guess just a question I have about that that period of time were you just kind of in shock or, or were you, did you have ideas about, Oh, what's going to happen? Were you in fear that the, that the business might close? You know, I just, what went through your mind? For me, I think it was all those things for sure. Um, you know, we, one weird phenomenon of this time period is, you know, we have, we have these ideas and we want to like get to work and be vigilant and um, like, do something and power through, but there is that, uh, phenomenon of like the hurry up and wait. So until we have guidelines from, and so we're in the city of Berkeley, which, uh, a lot of the national news is focused on, you know, seven Bay area counties were the first in the nation to issue the shelter in place order. Mm -hmm. Well, that's also the city of Berkeley health department, which functions, independently we're in alameda county but if you read these stories and you you see the counties listed out it'll often say and the city of berkeley and that's kind of what that means is berkeley the city of berkeley is uh, its health department is operating independently um and we're kind of wait we we always need to wait on what they say because it's all it's almost always more stringent than what is already pretty stringent thing coming down from the state of California and the governor's office. Um, so, you know, we try to work and I guess one, one thing I've been harping on with all of us is let's not try to do too much work in one direction only to find out that, you know, that's not going to be applicable to what's going on. Yeah. So for example, right now, you know, we're open for limited operations as an essential business, um, which we can get into the details of. But, you know, I think in the next short period of time, we'll be going into phase two because like the the BN world headquarters there, the side business that's right outside where Justin is, Mm -hmm. you know, you guys might be able to be this um, like what's called a, you know, dine in restaurant 
which the state has said, okay, uh, you can get, you can come in, you can get beers if you, you know, follow all these safety procedures, but every ticket has to include a meal on it. Um, but they haven't, that's good that they gave us some guidance, but not knowing what they mean by a meal is leaves us in a lot of flux. So it it allows us to do some work in the intermediate time, Mm -hmm. but you know, is that a meal for every person? How, what constitutes a meal? Um, you know, what, how, how many people can sit at one table, all all these kind of things we still don't know. So we just try and work on the things that are certain and try not to worry too much about the things that aren't certain at this point. It makes so I'm going through the same thing now uh, as everybody, I guess everybody is. It's good to talk about because the, the frustration around that is, is difficult too. And I've just had to just start to calm myself down and, and have that kind of train of thought that you have Jay is like, well, because in the beginning I was just making 10 different plans for 10 different scenarios and um, I got an ADD already, so that was driving me a little bit insane, <laughs> you know, and I just realized <laughs> why not just wait for a little more, you know, as the information unveils and with, with the governor recently in California saying, oh, we're going to move into phase two, but not all counties, uh, are, are qualified. Um, there's, um, and my county's not Contra Costa. Um, there's a part of me that's a bit thankful for that because I'm not, I'm not even ready for all of the, those guidelines that were that were put out. I, I now do need to, to start creating those scenarios again. Um, so anyhow, I, Alex, I think you were going to chime in too. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll second what I, I think Jay just described as like, you can kind of like wait and see what's going on or you can put like 10 different scenarios in play and have no idea which scenario is going to work. And I think it's been really helpful to have Jay's approach on our team mm. with that. It's kind of very, I'd say calming in a, in a, in a, in a kind of climate where it's easy to just let your mind wander and be like, well, what happens if this happens? And you can go down so many rabbit holes that actually are just a waste of time and mind share. It's almost yeah, to a certain extent to be, be maybe more important to be mentally fresh and prepared when you have the information that you need to actually, uh, beer delivery I, from Sam. Did you just text to, him to bring you a beer? Yeah, good job, Beth. <laughs> to be to be ready. Um, I think that's unprecedented. Sam bringing you that beer. It's a Natty Light seltzer. Oh, oh no! Wow. All right. Just All to right. cut that cut that out of the podcast. And it's warm, so I'm going to put it on ice. <laughs> you know, to go to go on with what like what Jay was saying with um, you know how like right now it's looking like there's going to be food like tied to every beer ticket. That's, that's an interesting one to have dine in. Yeah. At at first I saw that and I was just like, Oh no, this is like, this is, this is totally different and doesn't work with our food program. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then I started thinking, I was like, Spain's pretty cool. (laughs) I like their tapas culture. Right. There we go. There's one good thing that that comes out of all this. Maybe, you know, maybe we start having the tapa culture here. And then next thing you know, maybe we start taking naps in the afternoon. Ah. And then next thing you know, maybe we start going out at 10 p.m., 11 p.m. That's an early time to go out. Yeah. And maybe we stay out till four in the morning. Wow. That's just the new normal. So I'm ready to pivot to all that right now. That's how we stagger the population going out is that we'll just be open. Everything's open 24 7. It's open 24 yeah. 7. In open yeah. air and open, open. And we're just open. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like, your your groups of friends sign up for a block on Saturday night. It's like, oh, what are you? Oh, I'm the A block. Oh, that sucks. You have to be home by ten. <laughs> I'm I'm in the B block. I'm out from ten to two. You know? Yeah, I'm in the cool block. Yeah, yeah. I want to I want to point something out because I know the two of you uh, fairly well, and and for for Alex to point Jay out as the calming one, because Alex, you're so laid back too. I feel like you guys are like calm squared. You it. I want to just go hang out at the rare barrel so I can calm down a little bit. Well, you got to be calm yeah. squared if you're going to do only barrel aged beer. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It doesn't work any other way. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I, I heard a rumor that you guys, did you start doing like 
grocery type stuff when you when you reopen people can come pick up yeah, beer totally. and like yeah. essentials was that a thing I, this is this is also one of the big surprises if you would have come up three months ago and said you guys are going to be selling groceries you're going to be selling four different types of flour you're going to be selling <laughs> noodles uh dry noodles yeah, like that. And yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna sell. You're gonna be selling olive oil. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Toilet okay. paper, hand sanitizer. You're crazy. Um, yeah. And I'll admit, you know, I think it was Danielle who proposed it first. At first, I was like, I was like, I don't know. It's not like it doesn't seem like it's gonna be like that big. Maybe we should just focus on selling beer. And then pretty quickly after that, I was just like, no, this this actually makes total sense mm-hmm. to do this mm-hmm. um, because. If you're trying to go shop for groceries now, it's a, it's a totally different way of shopping. You know, you, at least, at least in Berkeley, it is, you know, it's an hour wait to get into uh, some of the stores. And then when you're in there, you get in this mode of like, I'm going to get everything for the next month. So I don't have to do this again. It's a battle. Uh, And then, and then you forget the sugar and you're like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. so yeah, you just go on the rare barrel website, order some sugar and order some beer while you're at it and you're good to go nice um and so it's one of those things that for us the grocery side of things uh isn't going to uh be a huge contribution to our our revenue but what it does do is it adds this convenience factor yeah anyone in berkeley who doesn't want to wait in line and just needs that one essential good um and if they're picking up beer already it's just like yeah. Why not just get that one thing that makes it so I don't have to go to the grocery store for another week? So it's, it's a really great service. That convenience side of things. Not not and, to mention that some of that stuff is just not available. Uh, I mean, apparently. Oh, totally. Yeah. Flour. Like yeah. my neighbor like my who, neighbor upstairs bakes a lot. And he's been trying to buy flour direct from um, the place that he loves getting flour. Yeah. And I, you know, he was just like, what kind of flour are you guys carrying? And he's like, oh, that's my favorite. Guistos oh. is what I bake with. He's like, I'll take your a 50 pound. Is, your chef is using guistos. Um, so, you know, we're, we have access to all these things that through our chef. Um, and I'll also point out, like, our chef is sourcing awesome ingredients for this. Right. Thing. The flour she sources is fantastic flour. And she's, it, the, the, the basic ingredients that she's getting for our grocery program uh, are the basic high quality ingredients that she's using to make the food here too, which yeah. you can also get if you need a meal in Berkeley too. You're, so you're extending their access through through your access, which is awesome. Because yeah. I feel bad yeah. for your neighbor because uh, your neighbor might have baked a bunch of bread before, but nobody else did. And now all of a sudden everybody's baking all their own goddamn bread. Like, it, <laughs> you know, people have never baked in their life are like, I got to bake some bread. Get the... Get the oh, flour. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know. Yeah, you should feel bad for him. He well, shouldn't feel bad for him because now no, I don't. I got yeah. him a fifty-pound bag of flour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then you should feel bad for him because when he asked, "What can I do to help you out?" I said, "Why don't you bake five loaves of bread for everyone who's working at the rare barrel?" Right oh, now. nice. Very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Yeah, Jay got one of those. That's cool. And so that's the, that's the kind of stuff I like. Um, and it's a it is a strange um, pivot. That's for you. Um, but a smart one and, and because it's not, yes, it might also make people go, Hey, I'm going to buy some beer so I can get some flour or vice versa. Yeah. Right. But it really is a service too. So, you know, I, I just think I've heard of a couple uh, different breweries doing that and that's still happening now at the rare barrel. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, seven days a week. So, uh, the rare com, and they, and uh, it's all just like order online and, and then curbside pickup type thing or exactly. out front pickup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the cool thing too, um, that if like, for those of you breweries out there that have restaurants or have a chef, um, she, she's also making some like essential goods for the kitchen too. Uh, so it's not, it's not a meal, but it's not, um, just like an essential good, like toilet paper or flour. She's making things like, um, like a pho vinaigrette. And so it's this, this, um, sauce that you'll put on, your pho noodles with a bunch of vegetables. Oh my God. And it's going to take this meal that would be basic in flavor profile yeah. without it. And you put this sauce on it and it's like, you're now, you're now the star chef in your home 
Oh my god! Um, it's like I've I've bought that like four or five times already. <laughs> I am uh, she's so. Also, she's, she's making like homemade sriracha, um, all these other like really good like essentials, uh, some mustards out of our um, our beer. Uh, she's like a saison mustard, super massive like dark sour with berry mustard wow. things like that that are like like little accents that you can add to your meal that will make it taste great. And so if you have a chef out there. Um, there's this in-between zone too yeah. that, that you can have your chef do to drive people to your brewery um, and make not only like make it easier for them to get goods, but I find these little accents are making it like so much more fun to be cooking at home because sure. I'm a decent chef, but when I use my chef's sauces, it makes my food taste so much better. I love that. I. Another convenience factor. It's kind of a little, uh, yeah, just a tweak on your cooking and, and it, not just that we're not maybe great chefs, but we kind of have no choice. So specific, I'm so glad we're doing this interview right now just for the pho, because I'm, I'm not lying or exaggerating or anything. The other yeah. day, I sometimes have these split seconds where I forget that all of this is going on. And I was hungry at lunch and trying to think about what I wanted to eat. And I love pho. And I, and I hadn't had it in so long. I was like, oh, I'm going to go get pho. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> No, uh, I can't go get pho. Uh, my place is closed, and pho's never good to go. Um, so I can't. And I really, I have these moments, right, where you just forget this is happening. And so I'm like, great, how long do I have to wait for good pho? But I can, like, make noodles at home and, and buy this, this pho sauce. I'm in. Uh, this is a great service. And, Justin, if you love pho, you can, like, you can make the broth, make a bulk thing of the broth. Yeah. This is what I've been doing. Put it in mason jars or tupperware freeze what you're not going to eat or drink that week yeah and then you have like pho on demand for a month i All love you have to this do is thaw your pho sauce right thaw your pho broth and then the noodles depending on how you're going to cook them if you're going to do it the fast way it's just going to take like five minutes if you do it the slow and proper way you let them soak in neutral water for about 45 minutes and then throw them into boiling water um, Alex and I are starting a new podcast, by the way. Yeah, we can take, we can take it's called the Fuckcast. Uh, <laughs> the Fuckcast, yeah. Uh, no, nobody out there can but. take that. I've just trademarked it right now, the Fuckcast. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, I, I love all those dea- ideas. The problem is I now live in an RV, uh, so I'm going to have to use Beverly's uh, freezer uh, to, <laughs> to, to store all my fuzz uh, stock. My fridge is uh, as yeah because you were yeah. you were going to go on a, a road trip. I'm supposed to be about. in the middle of America somewhere right now, uh, yeah. doing this very thing. So I'm yeah. thankful to still being able to do this very thing. But I had sort of uh, sold all my possessions and uh, got an RV. Um, listeners out there, uh, this is probably breaking news. I, I I I got rid of the bunker and kind of upgraded an RV that I could live in and that would uh, make it all around the country. But now I just live in a friend's front yard uh, in it. <laughs> so, yeah, well, things, how things get, have changed. If you need a little extra space, I think I can find some barrels right, for you to sleep on next to me. Yeah, yeah just, yeah. just every now and then I need to get out and stretch, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> now, wh- wh- what about what about beer sales? Did did you guys do online beer sales or shipping or anything like that before this? Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've done uh, online beer sales to a certain extent from day one uh, just because we realized we're not, we're not going to have a whole lot of beer and we might not have a consistent supply of beer when we're uh, making just barrel-aged sour beer. So we kind of set that up from the beginning. Okay. Um, so that was helpful. Yeah. Fortuitous, you know? Super helpful. And, and has that increased? Or is that kind of steady as it was before, too? We've, we've seen a lot of support from our fans over the last uh, two months. Um, and we've also, we've also kept it super fresh mm-hmm. uh, for everyone, too. I think one, one big thing that we've done is we've, we've kept a pretty decent seller of like a library of all the beers we've ever made. And um, this seemed like the perfect time to release a bunch of our seller nice uh to to uh generate revenue and you know keep keep us uh in business through the through these weird times yeah yeah so uh if you had only said oh, crazy said, times sorry crazy i said times. these <laughs> yeah you said these yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So that's I forgot to I get more if, beer. Like, I know we're, we're we're chatting about like what what things like other breweries can do. Well, I mean this is this is like a pretty obvious one if you have the seller, but we're just kind of like whatever we can do to create a unique uh, package for our customers. We're going to do it. And I, I saw Cellar Maker, um, you know, did that with their sour program. They released a mix pack of like six bottles. Nice. I think for like 145 bucks and sold out like that. Just like that. People want to support and they're getting something yeah. great. I mean, you didn't sell her these things for no reason. You sellered them because they were some of your greats, right? So totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I just a couple of days ago interviewed uh, Russian River, uh, Natalie and Vinny, yeah. and they were they weren't talking about during this, but just other financial difficult times for them in the early years that uh, Natalie was saying, you know, there were times when I just went into Vinny's office or, or the brewery, that is, and said, um, uh, what do we have in our cellar to, to sell? Because I need to make payroll this week. And by our seller, she meant what's in our personal stash that we can sell because I need to make payroll this week. And she was kind of making this point, too, that you, well, we sometimes just do what we need to do, right? You got you, you have to survive. Um, but a brewery like you, you know, this was early on in Russian River, so they don't have the amount of, like, uh, sour and age stuff that they have now. You guys have always had that. So that's another, I think, fortuitous moment that, you're just you are getting creative, but it's something that you had always planned would be a thing. You just maybe accelerated it, right? To to do something about this. Yeah, we 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 ex- accelerate or delayed the sale of it seven years. That sure. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you guys doing delivery at all, or is it pickup and shipping and what what else? So we're going to uh, just give Alex a little break here, so he can have a sure. sip of beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so we're doing our online shipping. That's to any consumer in California, in any California. retail account in California. <clears throat> um, the pickup is local. I mean, you can drive from wherever you want, uh, but you know, it's mostly been local interest in our pickup. That's bottles to go, anything crawlers of, uh, the beer we have on tap. Um, just, I think you're familiar with this, but we have, get, we have guest beers here. So we're actually, Crowlering that to go. As That's well. a question I have. You're allowed to do that. That's cool. Yeah, as the ABC, our uh, statewide uh, liquor control is kind of loosening the ties. Um, and uh, the delivery thing is interesting. I think as you know, as things kind of continue not to change that much. I mean, I think we're going to have this face and you know, famous last words on these like predictions. Yeah, but, it changes every hour. Yeah. The, the phase two reopening, I don't think is really going to change our paradigm so much. And, you know, listening to your uh, AZ Wilderness uh, podcast from last week, you know, they their delivery program was going bonkers. Yeah. Great. Um, and, you know, there's no traffic in the Bay Area right now. So maybe maybe we'll have to check that out. Um, but, uh, you know, just a, cu- a couple of extra thoughts on those things, you know, Alex talked about how we've been online shipping from day one in the back of our minds, which is now like, you know, kind of tumbling down the priority list, but I I would encourage breweries out there to pursue it is during these times where crazy times where, uh, you know, the amount of beer, the, the, the state, uh, the tech sale, all the alcohol control, uh, has been like, really loosened and i have to give you know these some of these bodies are kind of notoriously um adversaries of breweries um sometimes in, been... in good ways and sometimes in bad but uh you know they're they're really working with local craft brewers now and so i encourage a brewery anywhere in the country or even internationally if you're not able to do this to to give them a call and ask if you can ship beer right now direct to your customers Mm -hmm. i mean and if we can build some momentum like it's it's harder to you know during normal times ask permission for this if we some momentum in this and it's helping these small businesses across the country yeah it's gonna be harder for them to take away later if it's if they see okay well this has been a great part of the economy why why were we even doing this in the first place like this is dumb yeah, and it is dumb. 
to be frank. So I encourage any brewery listening to this to reach out and just see if you can do it in the meantime. And then we'll have a lot broader network to kind of lobby to get, make it more permanent later on. Um, that's yeah. one thing. And then the second thing is, uh, you know, thinking about the easy wilderness and their delivery, you know, it's nice. They've been able to bring back their bar staff to do this. But I think a key part of that here in California is there's this weird dynamic between unemployment benefits and the PPP loan. So we were lucky enough to get our PPP loan, hmm. but in, in the case of like our bar staff where such a large percentage of their income comes from tips, you know, we, the, we, we can't, if we're bringing them back and we're not getting our usual bar service, then they're actually better off staying on unemployment. And yeah. I want to point out one thing that's a little tricky in California right now, you are like, so we invited all of our staff back. It, even if they say no, it doesn't affect their unemployment. Oh, good. I, I read that it, that it might, I didn't know that California, it was an exception. There's something weird where like, and not to get off on too far of a tangent, okay. but Elon Musk recently with the, the Fremont yeah. factor yeah, yeah. reopening said that the state was going to somehow affect the workers, um, unemployment benefits if they don't come back to work at Tesla. But yeah. According to the, to the California website, like that's, that is not the case. So I'm not smarter than Elon Musk, but he's also insane. So I, I don't know what's going on with that particular situation, but right. I know for sure in Washington state, for example, um, there was a, like a spa owner. I was reading this article where she got the PPP and she was so happy and letting all our employees know. And then they were all, pissed because they were going to make less money even if you're like not coming back to work you're just getting paid your normal rate it's good they were going to be making less than the unemployment insurance so right PPP is in the, it's it's perfect for some businesses it's not so perfect for a lot and then there's a whole lot that hasn't even gotten it so yeah we're we're all trying to work through this this particular thing but I just wanted to make that mention about, you know, some of these considerations when we think about, oh, should we start? And maybe some other breweries are thinking about this out there. If we start a delivery program, can we get the people to staff it? So that's that's a consideration you always got to think about when you're going to try out new things. But, you know, now is the time to try out new things. I think customers are forgiving of trying something for a little while. We started to do DoorDash and mm-hmm. I'm not, they're kind of making it a little bit. They, they lowered the fees or made it free to use, but then there's a bunch of other parts on the back end that are really tough. So we may end up just using that for a month and then getting rid of it. I think there's nothing wrong with trying a bunch of new stuff out right now and seeing what sticks. I, I think you're right. Um, I'm so glad I'm doing these, these interviews because I am learning new things every time. Um, I want to address the PPP and the asking your ABC, both of these great comments that you've brought up, uh, Jay. The, I'm I'm right in the thick of that with this PPP loan um, because they're starting to say we can open up. I do serve food also, uh, even though Contra Costa doesn't qualify just yet. Um, and and struggling with uh, I, I have this money, but I'm just holding it over here because it's I want to pay it to my employees, but I don't know what being open looks like. So how many of them can I bring back? There are restrictions about, you know, and honestly, I've heard it in every interview, it's different. And every, and every article I read, it's different. Uh, you know, sometimes it's, it, you have to bring back a hundred percent of your employees. And sometimes it's, you have to bring back a certain amount and there's an equation. I could give you the equation, but it's boring. Um, and I don't know what the answer is, but I will say this. Uh, I'm so glad to hear from you that you, you, your understanding now is that California is saying, no, just because they're offered their job back doesn't mean they won't be able to keep their unemployment. Because I read on the, this is directly from the SBA site, there's a whole FAQ. And the question to the FAQ was, um, uh, uh, what if I offer a job back to my employee and they don't take it? Uh, well, then, according to the PPP, you've done your job to be forgiven of that part of the loan. 
And then it does say, however, your employee should know that might affect their unemployment status if they refuse their job. So in other states, that might be difficulty. I'm now going to go do some more looking about what you just said, because that's really helpful for me and my staff. Um, Because I'll tell you what, and I'm sure you guys are the same. I've been just as honest and upfront as I can be with my staff from the day that we had to lay them off. I try to send them an email at least once a week. Sometimes it takes two. We had a, a video call just like this so I could bring them up to date. And every step of the way, I tell them I'm I'm working on this, but I'm also thinking about how it affects you. Because if open is you know 25% of my capacity or 50% of my capacity... I don't want you to come off unemployment. I don't want you to go broke here, you know. Um, right. And I'm and and I think and they're working with me too. We are doing this balancing act of what do we do as a business and how does it affect our employees too? Um, and the information, like everything else, just changes every day. Um, to the ABC licensing, um, I've been thinking the same thing that now is the time to ask for different changes. So one of the things that's happening across the country is some of the restaurant restrictions or bar restrictions are like outside seating only and things like that. Well, uh, for those of you who don't own a bar, or, um, you know, even if you go to a bar, you know how they stop you at the door. You can't leave with your bar unless you're in Las Vegas. You can't leave with your beer. Um, well, that's because our property is our licensed zone, right? And that's that, like that you can only consume in that licensed zone. Well, for companies like me and probably many others, I actually have a courtyard in the back of me, a a giant courtyard with a fountain that's sort of public part of the property here in the building. It's I'm not licensed for to sell alcohol out there. Um, But uh, by the way, I I texted Kevin and he brought me a beer. So I have my own Sam. Uh, Thank you so much. Kevin. Um, I'm going to text him right now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jay's going to text you now, too, Kev. He needs a beer. Uh, so my thought was, okay, if I'm only allowed to serve outside and the ABC here in California is being uh, uh, pretty uh, flexible to keep us all in business, now's the time for me to ask, hey, can I, can I serve out in my courtyard? Because my capacity inside has now been cut in half, but people mm-hmm. want to come out and buy beer, and I can keep them six feet apart with another thousand square foot of space you know and and yeah. and i'm just agreeing with you jay that's my example and maybe in every locale you have an example of something that might be worth asking for um and i just want to add that some of the laws are antiquated but i will say this because i've been doing a lot of reading about it in california now one of the measures that they use oftentimes for for certain laws are things like the amount of duis that are occurring in the state the amount of criminal alcohol, um, basically people abusing alcohol is a driving factor for the laws that they make. And, and, and they, yeah, some of the studies are valid and some are probably a little skewed. They, they measure the laws against that kind of activity. Um, you can imagine that right now, DUIs and, and, and drunk related crashes and things like that are really on, on the down are, are on the low. Uh, and on one hand, you can say, well, that's because we're not driving as much. But you could also say, but we're selling 10 times as much alcohol to go, and it's not having the effect that you thought it would, which mm-hmm. is too... Inc- yeah, yeah, I think that's that's right. And, you know, I'll, I'll repay the compliment Alex gave me earlier, which is, you know, it's, we have a great co-founder team, and Alex is actually doing a great job on getting our outdoor space going at the rare barrel. Um, and I, I want to revisit that in just a second, but also give a shout out to Brad, our CFO and chief, chief father officer, uh, nice. my dad. And uh, he, Justin, uh, you should check in with him because he's doing the same thing on okay. PPP for us. Uh, and I know, you know, between uh, you and Kev and Scott and the, you're, you know, you're kind of, you guys are doing it all right now. And I, I can't imagine not having Alex and my dad to help. I've, I've been mostly more kind of at the brewery focused. Um, but like if, if I had to like do that and work on work with city of Berkeley and ABC on outdoor seating and to PPP, I would be overwhelmed. So That's I, I know you've mentioned you're, you're reaching out to local uh, businesses and brewers and just 
add us to the list. But thank you, Alex. Maybe you can give us an update if you can at this point. I know it's still a work in progress, but I know yeah, we're sure. trying to work on some outdoor space. Yeah, so we've been I've been trying to work on an outdoor space with the city for about three or four years. Right. And yeah. We have we have a huge parking lot that we can do it in. Um, the zoning says you can't have outdoor seating in our area because it's a mixed use light industrial manufacturing area. Um, when we started to see how drastically uh, this pandemic was going to potentially affect breweries and specifically our tasting room um, for who knows how long, you know, potentially it could be a couple months. It could be a year or two. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and for a business where the tasting room can be anywhere from, you know, a third to a half of your business. I mean, that's for, for a lot of breweries, which are, you know, most breweries in the U S are relatively small. Um, that can be the difference between you being in business the next year or you not. That's right. Um, and so I was like, all right, well, this is the time to ask the city again, which I've always, it was in a conversation, but I told them this is the situation in the United States. Like breweries on average, across the United States are down 60% in sales. Mm -hmm. And the Brewers Association is expecting that if things don't change drastically by the end of June, it's possible that half of breweries in the U.S. could shut down. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That is that it's, is insane. It's an enormous number. It's an enormous amount of jobs. Uh, yeah. So not just businesses, but all those that they employ. But yeah. And so, so I talked with one of the managers who's in the planning department and explain the situation and they were a lot more accommodating while also finding a way that fit within zoning. Okay. Yeah. So like we didn't go outside of the zoning in Berkeley, they found a way to interpret it in a way that worked both with the city and with us. Yeah. Um, which on the one hand, I feel like an idiot for not finding out how to do this three <laughs> or four years ago when I started doing it. I keep going um, through that too. But on the other hand, I am so thankful um, that the city is, is working with us through this and really, really, um, proud of our local government. Um, and I know we're not the only business, um, that they're working with right now. They're working with a lot of businesses to try and keep small businesses in business because this is really, uh, I don't want to get too grim, but this is like a, okay. this, this is a super life or death kind of situation for businesses, small businesses across the U S right now too. Yeah. Um, we need to put people first, I believe, in terms of making sure that we can safely take care of everyone. But if we can also have local governments working with the, the small businesses um, so that there are breweries and there are restaurants and there are jobs for people at the end of this, that's that's going to be the best situation where we come out of this. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll... I'll scream from the mountaintop. Go talk to your city right now yeah. for things that you couldn't do before. Um, for one reason or another, you know, go clear your case and tell them the truth about the challenges that you're having as a business right now and the, the challenges that you're going to have uh, for the foreseeable future. And they're, they understand, I think, from what I've been... They're motivated. They, they're motivated, motivated to understand now. And I think to put a fine point on, on what Jay said ab about doing this is... If we do this and we do it as responsible uh, entrepreneurs, responsible business owners, responsible citizens, um, the proof is kind of in the pudding when this is over that all hell didn't break loose when we were allowed to have uh, drinkers on the patio and all hell didn't break loose when I'm allowed to deliver beer and so on and so forth. And I, and I think that and I think that most of us are really responsible in that way. And so it, it, it's not only a good time to ask because I think they're willing to move. But as Jay said, because they might be willing to keep it that way, you know. Doesn't hurt to ask. What is it? it doesn't cost you anything to ask right now, <laughs> yeah. and it's the best time to do it. Yeah, but my partner Marty uh, has always said that since the very beginning. Uh, it just never hurts to ask, whether he's asking for us to pay less rent or uh, whatever it is he does. He's like, hey, well, they can only say no. I'm going to ask. You bet your ass. Mar Marty is definitely your your Brad. <laughs> yeah yeah marty's my dude i i just love the guy i know marty he's doing the things that my dad's doing for sure <laughs> yeah 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 absolutely and we've got meetings tomorrow about our ppp loan and um 
Uh, so I might need to see if I can book a call with your uh, with your uh, chief chief father officer before that because I don't have a lot of info. I have I've got ideas and a little bit of I'm piecing together info from all over. So Jay, maybe I connect to the after this call. Absolutely, you know. absolutely. And that, I, it actually just reminded me uh, I was back home for for Mother's Day and uh, my dad was listening to a, a call on PPP, one, one of the suggestions I have for people, I, I, we can go on forever, but uh, an additional suggestion I have is there are so many free webinars going on right now hmm. from uh, local guilds, state guilds, national organizations for like retailers, restaurants, law firms, small business associates, all these things. They have been Really, really helpful. You can ask questions in them. It's a Zoom thing, kind of like this. Yeah. Take, take advantage because these things, you know, during normal times, not these unprecedented times, would be like, you know, a hundred bucks to watch them for the hour or whatever. And <laughs> they've got great people. So my dad was listening to a PPP one, and that's where he found out about the thing, Justin, you were saying, which is, uh, you know, if someone doesn't want to come back, then they count as the full-time equivalent or whatever. Yeah. And so now, then we had to go back, okay, we need to document who are the people like, okay, we just need that recorded because they're going to require that. It's in writing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, there's a, there's a CCBA and shout out to CCBA who's been doing a great job. Uh, California Craft Brewers Association, they have a, a, a free, webinar tomorrow morning that's going to be about this phase two reopening so uh, we've got some employees plugged in on that look for these get plugged in with your local guild state guild contact your brewers you know your brewing friends it's a great time to ask for help uh i know we're all it's it's weird we're in a spot where we're kind of really busy but not really busy at all yeah like our, our minds our minds are really busy and you have to make time to kind of shut it down for a while as well. But, you know, when you do feel up to it, I would say, you know, reaching out and seeing how other people are doing and yeah. getting those free resources that are out there is really important. It's it's excellent. And and the amount of things that I think the local government is doing and, and the ABC for us is doing, you know, you, you, you could be on the, the kind of uh, uh, pessimistic side, the, the naysayer side, and say, well, you know why? Why weren't they doing this stuff all along? Um, and it's and I think it's easy to fall in that trap because what I've noticed is there's a bunch of stuff that I'm doing that I probably should have been doing all along too. And sometimes it takes a bit of an eye opening experience, you know. And so I'm trying not to 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 put it off on others, but like instead go well. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff about my business that maybe I was complacent about that that it nudged me into that direction too. And I think a little bit of understanding goes a long way. And that's what's happening across the board, which is I've been saying, and I think on every po- every every show I've been doing here, it's it's a, there are positives about this. Um, I'm, I'm just, you know, I don't want to just keep, you know, crying about what I'm missing. And instead, I'd like to just keep embracing about what's changing and what's happening. And I think everybody I've talked to is is really doing that. And I wonder oh, with that, Justin, that's, that's deep. <laughs> did, you, did you go on a 10 day silent Vipassana meditation? Oh man, I, no, it was that probably that one time at Burning Man with you, Alec, like the five minutes we spent <laughs> together and I just became enlightened, you know, I'm turning red. I can see it on the camera. Uh, um, but I do want to use that as maybe a position to ask, um, what have you guys learned about either your business or yourself that maybe even if it wasn't brand new, even if it was kind of in the back of your mind, but now it just got put to the front. Is there anything that you guys have kind of gone like, like Alex, you even said, shit, I, I wish I had figured out that little loophole a while ago about opening the patio, you know? Yeah. Um, but creative thinking just comes in different ways, right? So I just wonder, it could be your personal life, it could be your work life, um, but any something positive or uh, that you've learned. Yeah, um, I'd be happy to take this one. First, um, I think one thing that I've learned is that, and this is something I've like, I've actually learned and tried to implement over the last like two years, Mm. but so it's kind of helped me get set up for this, but there are three categories of life that I will put things into. It's the things that I can control that I have complete control over the things that I have some control over 
and the things that I have absolutely no control over. And the majority of things that are going on in my life, I've realized are things that I have absolutely no control over. Yeah. Um, some things I have some control over and there are very few things that I have absolute control over. Um, and so it helps me particularly in the context of this to really kind of classify which things I don't have control over. Uh, because there's a lot that we don't have control over right now. We don't have control over the local legislation. We don't have control over uh, the state legislation. Mm-hmm. We don't have control over um, the virus, the health risks the virus. that are mm-hmm. associated with all of this. Mm-hmm. So when there's something that I don't have control over, I try to change my mindset uh, to look at it in a way that um, just understands what's going on and then respond to it in a way that I can instead of try to move this boulder that I just can't move. Right. Um, and as an, as an entrepreneur, I think Jay could probably attest to this, you know, seven or eight years ago when we were starting this, you, you're naive to a certain extent, which helps, but you think you can like push these boulders that you just can't move. And it can be really hard mentally and emotionally Mm -hmm. to just keep trying to do that. Uh, but if you really are able to like sit down and like think, what do I have control over? What don't I have control over? Then you can focus your attention on the things that you actually have control over. Yeah. Um, I love this. And then I'd say along those lines, you know, a big thing that I, maybe this is like part two of my answer is of okay. the things I have control over. The thing I have the most control over is how I respond to it. Um, I don't have control over there being a pandemic right now. I don't have control that there's, you know, health risks and people dying. I don't have control of, you know, our brewery operating as a, you know, a fraction of what it used to. But what I do have control over is how I respond to that. And, uh, as a business owner and as a human who cares about other people. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I love this. All right. I love no your need to to, no need for us to go to therapy this week. Justin. <laughs> exactly. No, I just, that's, I'm going to do this podcast every day with Alex as my, as my new co-host. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I, that is a uh, very sage advice and, 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 and sounds like something, like you said, you've been working on. Um, I do want to put a fine point. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned like the youth of entrepreneurship, the youth of the company where you do feel like, you can just do anything, you know, and you keep pushing that giant boulder. And I've very much done that. And in many cases, the the reaction, the consequences to that have been very delayed. In other words, the burnout came much later. You can still, yeah. you can feel fired up and push through and, and you're fighting that battle, but you're energetic and you're excited. And you don't realize for a, whatever amount of time that might be that you're exhausted and you can't, and it's probably better to you're learning Alex. It's I love to hear about how you're learning to like, okay, I don't have to just exhaust myself with boulders. I can't move. I'm going to just go around them a little bit and fix this other one. You know, I like that. It's good advice. Yeah, totally. Cool. Jay, anything from you? Yeah, I think, I think I kind of have a two part or two. I'll start more personal. I think, you know, it's as we're, as we all have just like a lot of, as I was saying, time on our hands. Mm. Um, I just felt like if you can't have some parts of your life that you're looking forward to, like going out and seeing friends and stuff like that, you know, one thing I've been trying to do for the last week to two weeks, especially in the context of how I was doing in the beginning part of COVID Mm. uh, is to, do get a little healthier actually. And I'm putting this answer first because it's the high roll answer and it's like what no one wants to hear or do, but it's all right, man. You know, I don't, you know, don't worry. I definitely got it in, in the first half of this, uh, <laughs> this COVID thing. Um, but it's something I'm looking forward to now, which is like waking up and feeling good, um, drinking less, eating better, exercising more. Mm. And, you know, I'm still, going to get my cheat day in and get it in nice during that time. But, uh, sure. you know, it's been good and it's, it's a good time to do something like that. I'm not, I'm not a big like health nut kind of person. So I'm not like 
on everyone get on keto or whatever, but you know, just do doing some little things. So to look yeah. forward to, um, on a personal level and then on a professional level, um, what, you know, this is, you asked, what is this reminding me about or something I learned? Uh, I, I love what I do. Mm. I love the people I work with. I love the company that Alex, my dad and I started. And, you know, when, when it's a, a fight to survive, I don't know, like kind of to your point, Justin, about being calm in the face of a, a stormy situation. It's like, well, I mean, we're going to do everything we can. And then back to Alex's point, the things we can control, we're going to know about, but we're ready. Like we're ready to do the things we need to do in order to save the company, bring the employees back, get back to making awesome beer. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm down for that. Like I'm awesome. down to, I'm, I'm in like, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing right now. I yeah. could say, Oh, I'd rather the company was in better shape, but what's that, what's that going to do? You know? So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I like my job right now. Um, you know, there's obviously a certain amount of like cognitive dissonance we all need to have with the like massive amount of tragedy going on out there. Um, but you know, yeah, just, you mentioned on one of the last couple podcasts, Justin, uh, about, you know, your work life changing into, you can't go past today. You got to check the boxes of today mm-hmm. and then you got to go home and recover, you know, yeah. and then you come back in and then you got to fill growlers and sell bottles to go and have a couple meetings and just like, just get in, check the boxes, get out. Mm-hmm. And there's something really refreshing about that kind of like work day. So I've, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying that part of this. I love talking to you guys. Uh, not only do I relate, but I'm learning stuff today. And, and yeah, Jay, that's what I, first of all, everything you said, both on the personal side and the business side was about health. And I think that's important. I think that's something, I think that's not insignificant. The health of your work life, the health of your business, and not just the health of yourself. And we don't have to just be bored right now. We don't have to just stay home and be bored. We could, you know, we could, we can take action. Uh, you know, maybe not the, maybe not the big action that we hope, like, uh, let's just open up and, and everything's fine again, but we can take these little actions that, that add up to something meaningful, which it sounds like it's doing for you. Um, yes. I mean, fuck it. This is a, this is a health crisis. Yeah. The way to fight back is to be healthy. And that's, you know, people have this automatic thing of like, Oh, I'm only going to eat celery and kale. It's like, no, no. Like, yeah health is about finding happiness and looking forward to things, you know, and doing something that you're going to like. And, you know, if you want to play two hours of video games, it's the perfect time to do that. Like get into a weird, like (laughs) fucking world of Warcraft quest. I don't even know that much about video games, but you know, it's like, yeah, you got time to do this weird stuff. Like get that book, you know, take that online class about something, have, have something to look forward to. It doesn't all have to be like kale smoothies. Right. <laughs> That's right. And, and it, you know, interesting thing about that, and maybe it's just me, but I find it ironic that on my, on my drinking game list, you know, in a time like this, a word could have been health in this health crisis, a word that we hear all the yeah. time could have been health. Oh, yeah. But in the way you're talking about it, Jay, but it wasn't on my list. My list was, uh, you know, pivot and this and that, which are, it's just, I'm not really shitting on all those things. I think it, they're all important. But why wasn't health one of them? This is only water, but it's <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then, yes, Jay, there is really something about the simplicity of work right now um, and, and survival. And it doesn't feel like the kind of survival where, like, I'm on a mountain and I have to get off by killing bears. But, like, the kind that in order to make my business succeed, to take care of my employees in the future, to take care of myself and my own future, those things have become simplified. And there's there's something really nice, beautiful about that in a way um, that, is, that has helped me, I guess. So th- those are the positives for me is that it's not a drudge. To come to work and by the way i also forgot how much i loved my job i really did and uh yep. 
a bit of a reminder that uh, we're in a good, we're all in a good business here, you know, the beer business and, and to, to work for ourselves and to have these creative outlets. I don't, I could go on, but, um, I, I'm really enjoying talking to you guys, as you can tell, I think. <laughs> so, I have enjoyed talking to you, too. <laughs> I, I, have not, I have not enjoyed this. So. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. But I did a... You know, I, <laughs> go ahead. I think to like for like the work motivation side of things, um, I mean, Jay, I, I think we've talked about this from day one of when Shelter in Place started, and I think this is still our main goal right now is to make sure that there is a a brewery and jobs to come back to Mm -hmm. for our staff on the other end of this. We don't know what's going to happen in between, but like when you're working every day so that you can protect the rare barrel so that when we can, we can have everyone here at the end of it. I mean, that's like, that's the biggest motivating factor I've ever had is like, is that because if I think about it from the other side, if we're irresponsible right now and the business shuts down, there's probably going to be other breweries that are going to shut down, unfortunately, through all of this. And then where's that going to leave our 20 staff who are also looking for jobs? I mean, right. That just sounds mm-hmm. terrible. I mean, we've, we've, we have awesome staff. We've, I feel like really fortunate to be able to work with them and get to know them and be a part of the team and, um, that's, yeah. that's it for us right here. Like that's what we're, we're working towards is, is it, having jobs for them. It's really worth saying, you know, we are, because I like for us to talk about the positive parts, but therein also comes the pressure. Uh, you know, let's be honest that there's, a, and, but it's because it's because you you feel responsible for these people that you care about your employees. You care, uh, you care about yeah. your business and you care about it in a way, not that it's just your bank account. You care about it in a way that it meets your community's needs, that it meets your employees needs, that it, that, you know, that the life you're giving has, has some extensions. And, and with that comes that sort of responsibility of pressure. Mm-hmm. So it's good that we have these other benefits and these positives so that we can deal with that pressure because, yeah. Our decisions right now, they're important, you know, and I think we all know that. Everybody's yeah, are. Yeah. And really. even though that might fall into Alex's middle category of something you can somewhat control. Yeah. You know, you also have to, like, you know, getting back to his point about control what how you react to it. It's okay to be upset about something that you can't control, you know. I think you some people get into trouble where it's like, you worry about the virus and the economic impact and the human impact. And you're like, Oh, but I can't do anything about this. Why am I Mm. looking at the news? And why am I so stressed out about this? It's like, well, uh, you know, it's upsetting. So like you got to allow yourself that time to be upset. You got to allow your, you know, to your point about the audio, Justin, you know, I think we're giving everything about this time period, some leeway, you know, Yeah. if you have, you know, a kid like Bevo, it's like, okay, you can misbehave like 25% more during this time because, you know, absolutely it's, not. <laughs> I was talking about Sam, but okay. Well, there's, you know, there's an idea okay, in, in, during this thing, I've become like a really old person who had like old guy, like not old, person, the old guy, I've become the old guy who like has all these sayings, I try not to do them on the show very often because they're annoying, but like, um, but perfection is the enemy of progress. And it's actually something I've always had in my head because as I'm doing things, as I've been an entrepreneur, I have it at a lot in many times been my own worst enemy. It's not good enough. So I don't do it. It's not perfect yet. So it doesn't get put out. It's not this or that. And there's something about this time where I know that we're all imperfect and the world is very imperfect that has somehow allowed me to go like, Release it anyway. Even if you don't, if you can't figure out how to use Zoom, do it anyway. That's what I've been doing, um, and I feel like I'm making a bit of progress because of that. So you know, yep, yeah, yeah it's so good. And I'll I'll second that, Justin. That's something um, my partner Brad gave me some feedback on that, like two or three years ago. And when he told me that, that really sunk in, and I realized like I was there were things I wanted to get done, but just wasn't getting done because I was waiting for it to be perfect. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, then if something, if you're waiting for it to be perfect, it's also not getting done. That's right. So like 
You need to get stuff done. <laughs> Which is way less than like, perfect. <laughs> it's way less than perfect if you're not getting it's stuff done. It's not even good. Done. Yeah. So, um, yeah. 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 I, I'm all on board with that one. I love it. That's a, that's a good dad quote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, listen, um, I can tell by the way that Bevo is fidgeting that she has to pee. Uh, she'd had two drinks during this podcast and we've been, super have to pee. Uh, I've been, I've worked with Bevo for a long time. I, uh, <laughs> we, we know each other. I'm her work husband, I think. So, um, uh, I do. One and only. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, re- I'm, I've never. You know, and I share a business with Sam. <laughs> oh, that's and right. As a air quotes employee of the Brewing Network, I've, I've never actually been involved in a recording where Bevo didn't just leave the room during <laughs> the recording. So. None of us know, just like we can't figure out the rules in the PPP, none of us know the Zoom rules. She didn't know if she was allowed to just go or not. We don't know. And I, <laughs> and I kind of feel weird leaving and letting you guys have full unblocked of my bedroom. <laughs> mm, right. Fair enough. <laughs> well, but we've about reached our time anyway. Um, so... Uh, before I thank you and say our sign off, I wanted to, uh, none of you guys, none of you guys mentioned my shirt. I don't know if you noticed. I, I saw it, oh, uh, sweet mask. Saw it on the line. It's uh, what germaphobic since Oh five or something. Yeah. So this is my hop grenade tap room version, but, uh, online. And if you're watching us on Facebook now, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see a link and you can go get it. It's a limited edition. Uh, it says the brewing network. And then it says germaphobic since 05 because I I have, like, I've been calling this for 15 years, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I wanted well, to give that. Gonna, yeah. If you're going to do shameless self-promotion, then yes, Justin, yes. I'm going to get right in there with you. Do it. If you're looking for a new face mask to walk around town, we've got rare barrel face masks. I am looking for one. Got nice. Your, got your tulip glass right there. Oh, when yeah. you come and get your fa vinaigrette, get a bandana with it. It's a oh, yeah. PH1 black and white rare barrel. Bandana. I love it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually have a day off. To, I'm off tomorrow. Uh, you got, um, are you at the brewery tomorrow or what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm coming down for that. And yeah. first, I need the fa sauce for sure. So Cool. Open two to seven. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, and you can go to the rarebarrel.com um, and, and do your online shopping for, for pickup right now or shipping. Right, you can ship all the stuff within California. Yeah. Uh, any any retailer or uh, consumer in California, cool. Looking for beer outside of there, we have our uh, yearly beer club that has signups in the fall, usually August September time. Okay, excellent. And a monthly subscription if you want the every three month kind of thing. It's a good time to 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 support your your favorite breweries, and and frankly, I'm sure you guys are seeing this. So many of you are doing that. Um, so I, I only feel like I have to say it in the sense that if this does keep going on, don't forget, we, we're still here and, and, and everybody still needs it. Uh, I think the beer community has been amazing. Uh, the people in the Bay Area are, are, are generally amazing, uh, you know, around our country. And so keep supporting your, your favorite tap rooms and your breweries. Heck, your, your favorite grocer. I'm, I'm not trying to be exclusive here. But if this keeps going on, just... Um, don't forget, we're all still here trying to do this, too. So uh, keep that support going. Um, Jay, Alex, I, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate that. Um, and I think you're each going to get tag teamed uh, to be my co-host uh, if, if this keeps going on. Um, because I don't like to... I tried doing it by myself, and it's not that fun uh, to me, really. Yeah. I need somebody. Yeah. Um, I, I, I listen to him and I'll, I'll be there for you. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I just, I'll, I need a I'll rotating of, host. I'll get out of my sweatpants and put on my Canadian tuxedo for you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks at home. Uh, thank you for viewing and listening. Um, uh, go to the rare barrel.com, uh, go to, uh, scroll down you can get your shirt. You can go to brewing network.com. Uh, I post these videos as a podcast too. Um, but thanks for giving us your time. I know it's valuable, even though you might be a little bored at home. I still appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, thank, thank you guys. It's great to see your faces. All right. Yeah, wonderful. We'll see you all next time here on the brewing network. Take care. Bye. Bye.